The Realme 1 was the result of a partnership between Oppo and Amazon India. Its real selling point was its price for around $100, but it came with some decent performance considering that low price. It had great face unlocking, it had a Helio P60 processor, which was fast enough for most tasks. The biggest issue was a lack of a fingerprint sensor, which for some people would have been a deal breaker. Then just months later, Realme became its own brand and it came out with the Realme 2. Not only was this strange because it was so soon after the Realme 1, but it was also strange because it wasn't entirely an upgrade over the Realme 1. It fixed some of the issues, it had a fingerprint sensor, and the camera was a big improvement, now a dual lens camera with a much higher megapixel count. It also had a whopping 4,230 million power battery, which could go for a long time. In fact, it was one of the best phones that I've used in terms of longevity, thanks to that low resolution combined with that huge battery. Unfortunately, though, it also took some steps backwards. The screen was a lower resolution at 720p, and the processor was the Snapdragon 450, which is actually significantly slower. And then just a few months after that, Realme's come out with the Realme 2 Pro, which is actually the upgrade that the Realme 2 should have been by a long margin. So very often when an OEM brings out a range of devices, you'll see them laid out in the showroom left to right so that you have the cheapest and oldest device with the lowest specs on the left, and it'll progress slowly to the right with the newest and most expensive and powerful device on the right. However, that wouldn't be a very accurate representation in this case. Rather, we'd have the Realme 1 and 2 on top of each other like that with their strange neck and neck specs. And then we'd have the Realme 2 Pro all the way over here because it's that much better. But it's not quite perfect, so let's take a look and see how it does. So in terms of specs and performance, like I say, this is a huge upgrade over the Realme 2. This time around, you're getting the Snapdragon 660 AEI SoC, which gives you far better performance for gaming. You should easily be able to handle most of the games on the Play Store. It's not a workhorse by any stretch of the imagination. This isn't one of the most powerful devices out there, but it's more than enough for the vast majority of tasks, and it's a significant step up from either of the two previous models. It comes with up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is a huge upgrade and it comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. The battery is unfortunately a step back again this time from the Realme 2 at 3500 milliamp hours but that's more than enough for most people. You still have the fingerprint sensor and there is a headphone jack down the bottom. Unfortunately there's no NFC which has been true for all three of the devices and which is also fairly standard at this price point so we can forgive them. But to me the biggest drawback of the hardware setup in this case is the micro USB down the bottom. We've seen manufacturers charge very low prices and include a USB type C, so we know it's possible. And this device has got the pro suffix in its moniker. You'd think it would have a USB type C. So that's a bit of a mistake in my opinion. It's a blight on an otherwise good hardware setup. A blight, I tell you. You've also also probably noticed at this point that the design is a significant step up also from the previous model. So these two were very plasticky feeling. This one has a glass build. They also have this kind of diamond effect on the back, which I did quite like, but like I said in my reviews, it wasn't always visible depending on the light. This one has what Realme is calling a dew drop back, and I don't really know what that means, but it basically has an extra layer of transparent glass on top, which gives it this nice kind of depth effect. And as you can see, the color here is quite attractive. More impressive is the screen around the front, which is a full HD display, and it has an actual dew drop notch at the top here, which makes it very small. As for the camera, it's a 16 megapixel primary shooter with a secondary depth sensor. It has a very nice big aperture at 1.7, and around the front, you also get another 16 megapixel camera, which is, of course, very good for selfies. In all honesty, I was prepared to not like the camera on the Realme 2 Pro, but it's actually not bad at all given the price. In fact, at this price point, I'd say it's one of the selling points. So it's definitely not perfect. It struggles a fair bit with exposure, as you can probably tell right now. And it lacks a bit of detail when you zoom in close on things. Uh, they can be a little bit over sharpened. However, on the whole, photos have got nice saturation, good contrast and good dynamic range. They also have that nice f1.7 aperture which means a you get the natural depth effects and at the same time the low light performance is also much better than you would expect. Plus it's nice to have the 16 megapixel camera at the front here for things like vlogging and of course selfies. You also get the 
faux bokeh effect, which is all but mandatory these days. That's a bit hit and miss, as tends to be the case at this price point, but it's nice to have it there. But yeah, if you look at the auto exposure in this video, then you can really see the limitations. Obviously not a problem if you're filming somewhere with nice stable lighting, but if you're filming out on the go and you're a professional vlogger, a YouTuber, then a video like this would unfortunately be unusable. On the whole, the camera isn't going to be suitable for someone who's a social media aficionado, but at the same time, it's more than suitable for just chronicling your adventures, your meals out with friends, and the crazy stuff that your dog does. I do always say that the devil is in the detail when it comes to devices, and there are some ways that this is going to give away the fact that you're using a cheap device. It's running Color OS on top of Android, which personally I'm not a big fan of. It has a few irritating features like the inability to remove notifications. What is that about? And it doesn't look as nice in my opinion as most other skins. In fact, I think it's probably the ugliest Android skin around at the moment. Likewise, another little irritation for me is the haptic feedback, which I find a bit loud and buzzy. Other people say to me, can't you just turn that off? And the answer is yes, but I'd rather have it on. I just want it to be good. And there are a couple of places where this doesn't feel like a premium experience, but then it's not, so that's absolutely fine. I used this for a couple of days and it was perfectly up to the task when I was doing my productivity tasks, when I was playing basic games from the Play Store, so it's decently performant for that price. Speaking of, it's the price of course here that is going to make or break this as a proposition. So if you go for the more expensive model, then you could actually have gotten a Pocophone F1 for just $50 more and you'd have got significantly higher specs, better performance as a result. And if you went for the cheaper model, then it would be roughly equivalent in price to the Xiaomi Mi A2, for instance, and that has very roughly equivalent specs. So I was hoping this was going to be, for the budget market, what the Poco Phone F1 was for the mid-range. Unfortunately, it's not that. It's a fairly standard offering for the price, but that's not to say it's not good value. It is good value. It's a nicely made phone and it will perform really well. It's just another example of how you can get a really decent phone these days for a lower budget. And there's much more option for people these days who don't want to spend a fortune on their Android device. It's definitely a big step in the right direction for Realme. And that's a callback to one of my previous reviews. If you didn't see it, it was really clever. In other news, I'm really tired. I give this phone a well done, real me. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please share it around. Please leave a like, that helps us out immensely. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the real me 2 Pro and what other devices at this price point you're interested in. If you'd like to see more like this, then subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And of course, head over to androidauthority.com for we are your source for all things Android.